One of the things that interested me most as I worked on this book, Entertaining Judgment, was the pervasiveness of the undead in our literature and culture. And one of the things that I wanted to pursue was why it is that we're so drawn to these stories of ghosts, of vampires, of zombies. Ghosts are stories that go back to the very beginnings of human history. Uh, we find people trying to placate the spirit so that they don't come back across the boundary and torment the living. And some of our most powerful stories of literature and culture, uh, Hamlet and Hamlet's ghost, uh, Dickens and Scrooge, um, these stories about ghosts are often as much about us as they are about the ghosts. And what they tend to tell us is that we are haunted by things and we make up stories about how we are haunted. So it is that we find Hamlet, uh, who is haunted by a ghost, who is trying to get him to do the duty that he knows that he ought to do. Uh, we see Scrooge in Dickens' A Christmas Carol, who is haunted by these spirits, who are trying to convey to him the distance between the person he ought to be and the person that he is now. Um, often what happens in these stories of haunting is that we are led to become the people that we are supposed to be. And so we find these stories scattered throughout our literature and our culture. Um, I lost track of how many songs there are about ghosts and spirits, uh, rock songs about how I will be the ghost in your heart, uh, a great uh, contemporary country song that's a hit now by a group called Thompson Square about being haunted by the past. Ghosts are a part of a uh, story that we need to understand because we are haunted by so many things. And so they help us to understand them when we consume them. Vampires, on the other hand, ask us to think about life and death and what we're willing to do to get the things that matter to us. The Bram Stoker model of the vampire, which is sort of the pervasive vampire, although there are other varieties, introduces us to a creature who lives forever, an undying creature. Uh, often this is a story that has undying love attached to it, and certainly that's the story that's behind the Twilight vampires, which have been so popular in, in recent years. And there are certain things about the vampire story that really appeal to us. We ask ourselves, well, who wouldn't want to be young and beautiful and in love forever? Those things sound like wonderful stories of the afterlife. But the vampire myth also has built into it these things that make us feel very squeamish. The idea that the vampire has to consume human blood, one of the great taboos of almost every human culture. And often what we see in these vampire stories is that the appearance, what we think we want, doesn't measure up to what we would have to do to get it. The vampire story is very good at telling us that. The last of the pervasive stories of the undead in our culture is the zombie. And the zombie is everywhere these days. Um, and here we're speaking of the George Romero zombie that comes from uh, the films done by the American filmmaker, uh, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead. In more recent years, we've seen 28 Days uh, Later, we've seen Shaun of the Dead, World War Z. And all of these films sort of operate on the same myth that something has gone wrong and turned the entire world sour. Uh, the zombies flocking over the world are in some sense this all-purpose metaphor for anything that's gone wrong. And some writers talk about how zombies are a perfect post 9-11 monster because they can stand for anything that you want them to stand for. They can be terrorists. They can be economic unrest. They can be anything that's floating around and keeping you up awake at night. And zombies are very good at doing this. But they're also interesting symbols because sometimes there's not that much difference between the zombies and ourselves. One of my favorite things about Shaun of the Dead is that there are points in the movie when you can't really tell much difference between the living characters and the dead characters. And that's a nice piece of satire that reminds us that we are prone to living lives where we bumble through just feeding ourselves and uh, not much more than that. And so the zombie story can actually be a call for us to stop, remind ourselves that we're alive, and live as though we are.